Good morning, people. Watch them in 65. Lisa Voice, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. That's how we're saved, why we're saved, and how we're kept saved, only by his blood. I bring this up every day because it's only by the blood that we're saved. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, at least any man should boast. That's, you put yourself in it, you put works in it, you put works in it, you put yourself in it. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, you and I are whosoever, believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You acknowledge the fact that you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ Jesus, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. That's the only way you're saved, by the blood of Jesus. Rapture ready, which is going to happen shortly, and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you will not and cannot lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, minister to you, feed you, um, turn your life around, change you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. He will do all that for you. Speak to you. He will do all that. I got this article off of, uh, where is this? Haritz. Russia. Now, we're going to mention the whole money crisis thing and the banks that are now in trouble in a minute. But this, and the reason why we keep bringing up this money thing and what's happening with these banks, this is the big picture. This is what's going to kill the U.S. globally as well. This is setting the stage actually for the Antichrist. This is the, the stage is set. Now, even though they gave a quick fix, you know, to avert a total collapse, it's just inevitable that it's going to, going to happen. There are several more banks that are in trouble. But before I give you this, let me give you what happened here. Russia invites Hamas leaders for Kremlin visit. So the Gaza-based Hamas militant group received an official inv invitation to Moscow from Russia Tuesday, this morning. The deputy head of Hamas's political bureau, Salah al arori confirmed in an official party interview. Commenting on the recent wave of Palestinian attacks, This is not good either. But commenting on the recent wave of Palestinian attacks and Israeli military raids in the West Bank, al Arori warned that Israeli attempts to use the upcoming Muslim holiday of Ramadan to change the status quo. Cody, be careful. All right. To change the status quo of all of the Temple Mount will result in a furious Palestinian reaction. So, while all this is going on, this is going on right now. He also reiterated that Hamas's patience is running out. Now, Israel got hit with some rocket fire this weekend. I got the alerts. Al Arori concluded the interview congratulating Iran and Saudi Arabia diplomatic reapproach, noting that this is a step that will slow down any Israeli effort for normalization with Saudi Arabia. Russia and Hamas, Russia and Hamas have long enjoyed ties and visits by the group are not unprecedented with Hamas leaders. 
visiting the Kremlin back in September. For its part, Israel has cautiously maneuvered its fragile ties with the Kremlin ever since Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, refusing Ukraine's request for air defense systems and other forms of military assistance due to its concern that alienating Moscow could endanger Israel's freedom of action in Syria. But when then Prime Minister Yair Lapid joined a chorus of states to vote to suspend Russia from the United Nations Human Rights Council, Moscow began to sharpen its criticism of Israeli actions, uh, meaning the Palestinians. There was a poorly camouflaged attempt to take advantage of the situation in Ukraine to distract the international community's attention from one of the oldest unsettled conflicts, the Palestinian-Israeli one. So now you got Hamas visiting Russia for you know what to stop Israel. And I got this about the banks again. So here's all the banks getting crushed now. And this came out mm, a few hours ago. So if there is one thing in history, and this is off a of news break, there's one thing in history has taught us about bank runs this time is that panic begets panic when one financial institution fails. As anxiety spread through and beyond the Bay Area last week after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, rumors began swirling that the famed tech financial institution would drag others down with it. And in some, some cases it did. Monday kicked off with several banks seeing trading halted. Now the stocks have rebounded. Big time. Miraculously. The stocks have rebounded. But yesterday kicked off several banks seeing trading, trading halted in that shares because the stocks were failing so fast. So if you have money in a bank that has seen its stock price plummet and trading halted, it's important to know that the announcement of the uh, Federal Reserve's bank term funding program went a long way toward preventing a bank failure domino effect. Experts agree that while the stock market is in for volatile ride, for a volatile ride. These are not the echoes of the terrible 2008 financial crisis. I beg to differ because God is in control and God is going to see that this nation is judged. So this was just the beginning right here. Now, if you have a little bit of money in the bank and I'm talking anything under 250 grand, your money is insured by the FDIC. Simple as that. Okay? Should you rely on that? You rely on God. That's who you rely on. That's the best advice I can give you. Consumers need to separate failing stock prices and volatile training, uh, trading from their actual deposits in the bank, explained Mark Newman, financial advisor and CIO of Constrained Capital. Their investments in the stocks of these banks could be at risk. Deposits in banks up to $250,000 are not at risk. Again, like I just said, so long as the bank is FDIC protected. Now, credit unions, I'm. someone asked me about a credit union and I'm... They're insured under their own National Credit Union Association. But that's that's like the FDIC, but is under the Credit Union Association. Still government, still funded, still insured. The magic number that the FDIC insures many accounts is 250000 Yet the Fed's policy for depositors at SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, pledged to cover 
uninsured deposits to prevent widespread financial collapse. In the end, if you have money in Silicon Valley Bank and it is $250,000 or less, you're fine. It's insured. If you have more than that, likely they'll likely protect you anyway. The Federal Reserve's policy sent a powerful sig uh, signal that depositors will be made whole in the current environment and also removes the mark to market risk that many were worried about, explained analysis uh, analysts at Morningstar in uh, Monday morning research note. These steps should go a long way toward being a circuit breaker on the current panic in the financial system, although we're not sure there is a way to undo the psychological change. And this is for people who have a bunch of money in there. Now, the banks that are in trouble. First Republic Bank, their share is plummeted 75%. Now, I read somewhere yesterday, Charles Schwab, or Schwab, is in trouble as well. Now, they're, I don't really, can I, I consider them more of an investment firm, but they still, they're still a bank. First Republic's uh, bank's shares plummeted 75% yesterday after declining 35% last week, leading the way down for banks that have been uh, collateral damage of Silicon Valley Bank's uh, run last week. Trades of the companies of the company were paused Monday morning due to sharp decline in stock prices, even after the bank received rescue liquidity from JP Morgan Chase. So they received money from Chase and the Federal Reserve. The funding raises the bank's uh, unused liquidity of $70 billion. Regional banks have especially been impacted by the carnage as midday Monday co Comerica Bank, I think they got uh, places in Dallas. Yeah, their Dallas-based financial institution uh, it's, saw its shares plunge 30%. KeyCorp, Key Corp, which is KeyBank, saw a summarily sh uh, steep decline, failing, uh, falling 28% by midday Monday. First Horizon. Shares were down over 20% and trading was paused. Yet, it's important to keep in mind, all of these banks are covered by the FDIC. So, if you, like I said, if you have less than 250 grand in there, you're insured. That's the way it's been. So, depositors who are within $250,000 don't need to panic that their cash is at risk of disappearing, even in the unlikely event more banks do fail. In a statement released over the weekend, First Republic founder Jim uh, Bearbart of CEO uh, Mike Roffler told depositors that the bank's liquidity positions are very strong and its capital remains well above the regulatory threshold for well-capitalized banks. So there you go right there. Um, again, there's some phone numbers here that, uh, you know, it says here the bigger money bank centers, uh, the bigger money center banks like J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, are going to be safer for larger deposits than your local bank down the street. And I said that. I said that this weekend. Um, so it says down the uh, safer than your local banks down the street. That may not be as much of. Uh, too big to fail bank. Now, if uh, Citigroup, JP Morgan, I don't even include Wells Fargo in that anymore, but Citigroup and JP Morgan and even Goldman Sachs, and Goldman Sachs is, uh, yeah, they're a bank, but, you know, and Cody, again, had a good analogy. He said this the other day. He said those banks are too big to fail. And, Fail, they will eventually, but I think it's going to be after the rapture. That's what I'm seeing. Those banks fail now. That's 
I don't I don't think I don't think so. Bank of America. But keep in mind here, mid-sized and smaller banks aren't the only ones impacted by the market's weariness of the health financial institutions. And I had said it earlier, Charles Schwab plummeted. They're looking at this one too to fail. Charles, Charles Schwab plummeted 30% in the past five days. And Bank of America failed 14% in the past five days. So there you go right there. So those are the banks that are look there. Not looking good. So, um, and like I said, there's a number here, phone numbers here that I answer questions. So it's a, it's a good article. So I'm going to link this in the description box and I'm going to link the one from um, Haritz about Hamas and Russia. And I will be back later today. Thank you.